Greetings, folks. Welcome back to The Power of Vintage. Today, we're digging into something I've been thinking a bit about. How do we keep the Atari ST and the Falcon alive when the originals are getting rare and more expensive? Let's explore some awesome modern rebuild projects that help keep Atari strong in brand new ways. Now, one thing I really appreciate about the Atari ST and Atari's 8-bit line of computers as well is how robust they are. They just keep running. That said, they're not immortal. Accidents happen, sodas spill, capacitors age. There's only a limited number of those machines still out there. So what do you do when your beloved Atari ST bites the dust? Or perhaps maybe you want a different form factor. You want to put something in a, a PC case. Or perhaps you want to tinker with upgrades like the Pi Storm or other accelerator boards, but don't want to mess with your original ST. Or maybe, just maybe, you want to experience a Falcon, but you haven't set aside a trust fund in order to be able to buy one of the few that are left in the wild. The good news is, is you have options. Number one, you can emulate. Running Hatari or Steam on a PC or Raspberry Pi is cheap, fast, and easy. You could also hardware emulate using something like a, a Mister, which is similarly fast, easy, less cheap, but still fantastic. You can try buying vintage hardware, which can be risky and a little pricey over at times. We all know on eBay that untested usually means tested and not working. Or three, and this is where we're really gonna get to the guts of the matter here, and it gets really exciting, is you can build or buy a modern Atari compatible system. And so we're gonna go down that rabbit hole today. We're gonna to start with one that I've actually built myself, the H5 Phoenix board. At the time of this video, these boards are available on Exos' store. This is a series of boards developed by Chris Swinson, AKA Exos, and has been developed with a broader community as well. Uh, this board, is a drop-in replacement for your Atari ST motherboard. Or if you're really adventurous, you could try adapting it to some other form factor if you'd like and building an entirely new system from scratch, 3D printing a case, etc. It features, among other things, an enhanced video DAC, built-in ST to VGA support, electrical fixes and upgrades over the original boards, and a lot of different nice-to-have nice features but it does require a little bit of work. In order to build one of these boards, you have to source or salvage some custom Atari ICs. That's the shifter, the glue, the MMU, a few others as well. Not too many, but you're gonna to have to source them. Now, the community is working on replicating those various different ICs as well. And the cool thing with the replication is that the expectation, hope, etc., is that these are going to allow for faster bus speeds, improved graphics performance, better resolutions, better colors, etc. There's even the previous version, the H4. This one, the Gerbers are openly available and downloadable so that you can build your own on a site like PCBWay or whatever. If you're interested in either of these boards, the Exos Forum is the place to go to get more information on them. So let's go over what I see for the pros and cons on this. Number one on the pro side full Atari SD compatibility. I've tested demos, games, all sorts of software on this. It's been rock solid. Number two, easy expandability via the multiple 68K dip sockets. You can put accelerators, you can put Pi storms, other upgrades. I, I know some folks don't like the 68K dip sockets. They work and it's, I find them easy to use. Three, it's designed to drop into any STF case, Atari STF case. Just put it in, boom, you're good to go. It's an easy replacement. Four, quality of life upgrades, like a RAM SIM socket. You just put one RAM chip in, but dumb, you're good. And you're not, you don't have to have a floppy cable soldered directly to the motherboard like you have in the original Atari STs. You got a nice little socket you can plug it into. It's great. And then lastly, the H4, it's open source. You can make it yourself. On the con side, it's not cheap. And when I say not cheap, you have to find the custom ICs. Where do you get the custom ICs? You either buy them from someone online on eBay, 
you buy them from Best Electronics, or you part out an Atari ST. If you have an Atari ST, great. That, you, that, that isn't working. That's easy. All those other ones, they cost a pretty penny, and it'll add up quite a bit, actually. Number two, you'll need some soldering skills. Already covered number three. And then the last one, you're gonna to need to find a case and a keyboard. This isn't just a drop into an ATX case. You're gonna to have to make something or find an Atari ST case and keyboard in order to connect to it. Now, this is one of my favorites. Let's talk about a passion project that seems like it came straight from a mad beaver dream of one of my favorite Atari community members. This is The Raven by Anders Grandland. It's named The Raven to show its kinship to one of our other favorite birds, the Atari Falcon. This thing is a homemade ATX form factor Atari-like system built to run a 68060 CPU with VGA graphics. It is wild. It runs Emutos, Emutos, however you want to pronounce it, and Freeman, and it can achieve blazing performance, fantastic performance compared to the original STs and compared to the Falcon as well. But let me be super clear, this is not for beginners. Anders himself says in the description of this project, hardware and software are provided as is, no promises, no guarantees, no support. Still, if you have the skills, the tools, and the patience, this might just be the ultimate Atari DIY project. Think of it as a Falcon-like rebuild project for yourself, DIY. And I myself, I, I love, love, love reading about the progress by various different individuals on the Exos forum and how they're building theirs up, running that, playing around with it, etc. All right, let's go into the pros and cons for the Raven. Number one, supercharged performance. A 6860 CPU combined with a VGA card, VGA graphics, that is something Atari users could only dream of in the past. <laughs> Number two, ATX compatibility. This just pops into a standard PC case with a standard PC power supply. Number three, if you like these kinds of projects, this is a dream project for builders like you. Number four, it's fully open source. Everything's made available. This is fully open. It's a community project as much as anything else. Anders is really the one driving it and the brainchild behind the whole thing, but there's a lot of folks that are also contributing to it as well. On the con side, 6860 CPUs are relatively rare and pretty expensive. It's a small community. And what does a small community mean? A small community means that if you experience an issue or an error, there is a good chance you might be the only person who's experienced that error. So you gotta be able to figure out it yourself which gets to the third bullet, it's DIY. DIY is not for everyone. I am gushing about the Raven, I love the Raven, but as of this moment, I am not to the point of feeling like I'm up to that level of DIY. And the last one, again, is along with the DIY, there's no plug and play here. You have to figure this out yourself as much as anything else. The, the folks that are working on it are willing to help to a degree, but for the most part, it's up to you. All right, we just talked about the Raven. Now for something that could become the ultimate Falcon remake, the Wiztronics Falcon Rebuild Project. These folks at Wiztronics have been part of the Atari scene since the 1990s, and they are still working on Ataris today. They are the go-to place in order to get your Atari Falcon repaired. And now they're working on a true Falcon board recreation. Now these guys at Wiztronics, they've got schematics from Atari Corp covering the Sparrow, which was a prototype for the Atari Falcon, the Microbox, which was the desktop, planned desktop version of the Atari Falcon. Uh, the Microbox, just a little bit of trivia. The, the casing for that Microbox was quoted in the patent for the PlayStation Tool 2 casing. And actually, they, the two of them look very similar to each other. And then even the Combill chip, that's one of the custom ICs, custom Atari ICs on the Falcon. Now, as of right now, mid-2025, they're assembling their first batch of Phase 1 boards. And some of these might be even available soon. Now, when I say some of these, they're, they're, the first batch apparently is only 10, 10 boards, right? So 
Some of them will be available soon, and those that will be made available will be fully populated. Eventually, after phase one, phase two, and phase three, they plan to release a full commercial system, complete with an aluminum case. All right, pros and cons. First pro, I look at this as the closest thing to a real Falcon that anyone's going to get outside of buying an original Falcon. Number two, this is gonna be commercial grade. It's going to be something that's gonna be sold to lots of folks, hopefully, uh, relatively lots of folks, as opposed to a hobbyist project. Number three, it includes VME slots. These VME slots are compatible with the TT and the Mega ST style cards. In addition to VME slots, it also will include ISA slots. Again, similar to the Raven, the ability to add VGA cards to the system as well. The cons. Number one con, it's not available just yet. Number two, <laughs> and I think you're seeing a trend here with regards to cost. This is gonna be probably pretty pricey. On their site, they use the reference point of it's going to be cheaper than a Falcon, Falcon prices on eBay, but cheaper than a Falcon isn't saying a whole lot. This next project goes back to replicating the original Atari ST. We have the ATX ST project. This is similar in many ways to the H4 board I mentioned at the beginning, in that it is open source Gerbers, number one. Number two, uses original Atari ICs. Now, how does it differ from the H4? Well, there's a few extra things. Number one, it's an ATX board configuration, which means it can pop right into your standard PC case with your standard PC power supply. Number two, it has an IDE header on the board. So you can plug in your CF card, boom, you're good to go. Obviously you need drivers and set up, et cetera, but it's relatively simple to go. Number three, there's an ISA slot. So like the Raven, you can easily add a VGA card. And number four, whatever, number five, whatever, whatever number I'm on right now, <laughs> you also have PS2 ports so that you can plug in your PS2 mouse and PS2 keyboard. All right, as for difficulty level, you can check this project out for yourself, but I would rate it a little more involved than the H4, H5 boards, but a little less than the Raven. Let's get to the pros and cons. On the pro side, ATX form factor. We've talked about that before. Standard PS2 ports for keyboard and mouse. A VGA header for 15 kilohertz monitors, so you can use the standard Atari video output that you have. However, if you want to try something different, it includes an ISA slot so that you can use a VGA card. And then lastly, you can switch between TOS 1.04, 2.06 for compatibility purposes, or the EMATOS equivalents, if you prefer those. On the con side, you need to source custom ICs. Number two, again, this is a very DIY kit kind of project kind of a thing. And then lastly, some of the pin headers are still a little bit wonky. You can build adapters for it, and there's, a, there's Gerbers for adapters as well. I want to highlight one last thing with regards to the custom ICs. As we talked about previously, there is work in the community to try to replicate those custom ICs. Hopefully that will take place, and you, this can move away from a con and be a relatively simple replacement situation. Now, before we wrap up, I want to highlight one other cool project, the Firebee. The Firebee runs a cold fire CPU at 264 megahertz. Cold fire CPUs are the um, successors to the 68K architecture. With modern features such as DVI video output, USB 2.0, and Ethernet. The Firebee is a semi-commercial product that takes orders in batches, and there seems to be a few floating around in the community as well. I don't, they are not taking orders at this point in time. Links for all of this is down in the description below. The Atari scene is alive and well, thanks to amazing communities, builders, and creators. Whether you're emulating, restoring, or building something brand new, this, there's never been a better time to be in the Atari community. It just keeps getting better and better and better. Drop a comment if you've built or are building any of these systems or are using any of the systems. I'd love to hear especially about the Firebee um, and anything that you're working on as well. If you've enjoyed this overview, go ahead, hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.